This is a podcast of the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Today we talk to Dr. Ross Chapman about his research on repairing DNA damage. Hi Ross. Hello. Can you tell us a bit about your research interests? The focus of my laboratory's research is to understand how cells deal with DNA damage, mm-hmm. and in particular DNA double strand breaks. Mm-hmm. So DNA breaks are something that normally happen, well, happens as a result of the normal functioning of the cell. Okay. And normally our cells are very well equipped to actually deal with these, detect them and make sure that they're repaired okay. However, we do know that sometimes the re- this repair machinery can malfunction, and this can lead to either uh, the mutations that trigger cancer, and, uh, and, and pre- these mu- malfunctions can lead to uh, the predisposition of patients to cancer. And in other cases, uh, it, the, such mal- malfunctions can lead to defects in the ability of the patients to be able to fight infection. How does DNA damage lead to cancer? So one DNA double strand break can be enough to, to kill a cell, okay. but it can also, in a different context, lead to a mutation or loss of a gene that normally functions to protect cell, our cells against cancer. Okay. So one example being in the context of uh, hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. Some patients ha- harbour a faulty copy of a gene uh, of either a BRCA1 or a BRCA2 gene. So these BRCA genes, what they actually do is they encode proteins that are major DNA repair, uh, parts of our DNA repair machinery. In the context of these patients, if they lose their one good copy, this faulty copy takes over and and every time a DNA break is encountered, these cells will start incorporating problems such as mutations and these are the mutations that end up driving cancer in these patients. And how does DNA damage lead to immune deficiencies? So immune deficiency in at the level of DNA repair is an, is, is an important but very interesting exception to the rule that we study in the laboratory. Mm-hmm. So in this case, your immune system, in order, in order to function normally, it needs to evolve and adapt to different, the different types of pathogens and different types of viruses that your body is exposed to all the time. In order to do this, a specialised type of immune cell called lymphocytes, white blood cells essentially, they use DNA damage in a targeted fashion, in co- introducing breaks into antibody genes and it's these breaks that get processed into mutations that enable those antibodies to be different from one another. Mm-hmm. In which case, you've got different lymphocytes that will make different types of antibodies, and those different antibodies can recognise different targets, such as uh, pathogens and, and viruses. Now, if this machinery breaks down and you can't introduce these mutations in this way, this, can lead to a, this will lead to an inability to do this, to make your full mm-hmm. antibody repertoire. This, in turn, will lead to immunodeficiency. Mm-hmm. However, what we've come to know from the research of my laboratory and that of others is that it's really critical that this machinery, which can be mutagenic, functions in the appropriate context and is limited to a context such as the immune system. Mm-hmm. Because if it gets decompartmentalised, it can suddenly wreak havoc in our cells, causing mutations in places where they shouldn't do. Mm. And we now know that, that, the, that, that it's this pathway functioning out of context which underlies the genome instability which causes cancer in patients that harbour faulty BRCA genes. How do cells actually try and repair DNA breaks? So our cells have got uh, two dedicated uh, protein machineries uh, that they use to repair breaks. One set of the machinery is involved in a pathway called homologous recombination Mm -hmm. and this is a copy and paste mechanism which uses uses a copy and paste mechanism to take an identical copy of, uh, or, or, or of the DNA and use that to, uh, as a template to repair a break accurately. Mm-hmm. So if this, if this pathway falls down, it's associated with hereditary ca- forms of cancer and spontaneous forms of cancer. The other pathway, non homologous end joining, is, is, is again quite complex, but, but, it, but it has a simple principle of taking two ends of a break and sticking them together. Mm. This, pa- this is the pathway that's, a sen- that's, that's very important for the immune system in generating these program mutations. However, it's also this pathway functioning out of context that can cause cancer. What are the most important lines of research that have emerged in this field over the last, say, five to ten years? Well, I would say developments and recent developments in personalised medicine. Mm-hmm. So, basic research, specifically in my field, has really fueled the development of new targeted therapies, which have been used now in the clinic to, to fight cancers. Mm-hmm. Um, these therapies actually, um, such as the, in the case of PARP inhibitors, which are used to, in, now used in the UK clinic to fight aggressive forms of ovarian cancer, mm-hmm. 
what they do is they exploit the DNA repair and weaknesses of cancer cells and use this to selectively kill them. And because these weaknesses don't exist in normal cells, the, uh, no, your, your normal cells are, are largely unaffected by these therapies. Excellent. And this translates into, into imp improved responses to the patients uh, with less side effects, which would lead to the deterioration of their quality of life. I see. Why does this line of work matter? Why should we put money into it? So DNA repair is one of our primary cellular defence systems against cancer. Mm -hmm. Developing a better understanding of, 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 the, of the basis of how cells respond to and repair DNA breaks gives us, will give us better insights into how cells protect themselves against mutations and how defects in, this, in, in the repair systems can you know, it will tell us a bit more about why cancer occurs. Mm -hmm. It will, developing a further understanding of this area will also be, give us a better understanding of what the weaknesses of the DNA repair weaknesses of certain cancer types and exploit these to develop more targeted therapies to treat and manage cancer. How does your work fit into translational medicine within the department? My research really is at the basic end of the, of the translational medicine spectrum. Mm -hmm. We think it's very important to understand the basic processes that function in a cell to safeguard us against disease. And without this knowledge, we won't be able to think of different new and innovative ways mm -hmm. to better diagnose disease earlier, and also find ways, if we understand the basic molecular basis of human diseases, we can exploit this understanding to find weaknesses or of, of, let's say, cancer cells, yeah. and, and exploit these in the clinic to, in, with new, innovative and targeted therapies. That's great. Thank you so much, Ross. That was really interesting. Thank you very much.